When I was a teenager, one of the things that would excite me the most was technology. A simple phone with a game on it meant the world to me. Computers were rare, very rare. Today, things have changed. As a programmer, I'm a part of a tech ecosystem. I get to build new things, see them and meet like-minded people. But the small town I grew up in, it hasn't changed that much. We have got smartphone, but it's more about consumption than creation. When I visited my town in October 2019, after a couple of years, I met Vinit, a 16-year-old kid. He was full of curiosity towards the work that I was doing and wanted to know how websites and apps are created. So I taught him about programming languages and how they are used to communicate with computers. I also showed him the simplest code possible to give him an idea. He just stood there with a lost expression on his face. When asked, he said, I don't understand English. Can I do this in Hindi? When I said no, the curiosity in him just tumbled downhill. Hello, I'm Swanan Kadam. Today, I'm here to show you the future of inclusive coding. I believe curiosity is the greatest gift for students. It shapes them in the way they want and not what others want. Now, technology is accessible even in the remote cities. Students there are curious about how it works. They are ready to learn, but the ecosystem has multiple barriers they need to overcome. For an Indian audience living in a metro cities, English is usually never the issue. Contrary to that, 65% of Indians comes from rural background. And for the students there, Learning English might be the biggest academic struggle of their life. That means their talent, curiosity and confidence is imprisoned by language barriers. Not having access to computers and coding aware teachers makes this gap huge. This resistance makes India miss out on a quality talent that can uplift themselves and their people using a medium like programming. Programming is our best tool today to solve problems. But there is zero awareness amongst the majority of Indian talent living in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. I could not forget what Vinit said to me. I started considering the possibility of Hindi programming language seriously because if done right, everyone who has access to smartphone and is fluent in Hindi would have the access and opportunity to start coding. And the possibility of this future fueled my desire to start my journey with Kalam. I never really got into how to build a language. So my first step was to read books that covered the fundamentals of a programming language. A programming language needs either an interpreter or compiler to make computer understand what you want it to do. I decided to build an interpreter. Computers cannot understand anything you type. If you type Dikhao, you need a program that instructs computer what to do when it sees that word. Interpreter is one of such programs, but interpreter itself requires a plethora of programs. One of those is tokenizer, which breaks down a statement into individual words called tokens. Just like we have spaces when we write down our sentences. For example, a tokenizer will convert my name is Raj without spaces to my space name space is space Raj. These tokens are then fed to a parser which attaches additional meaning to each one of the token and then store it in a parse tree. For example, this is what a parser can do for a coding statement like name is equal to Raj. It labels all the relevant data present like what is its value, what is the variable and what is the type of data. Basically, a parser will convert human friendly code into computer friendly code because ultimately a computer is the one who will be running it. All of this did seem difficult in the beginning, but I had to start somewhere. So the first command that I started building was a print mechanism which could at least output Namaste Kalam onto the screen. It took 4 versions over 20 days to make it work, but once I had this done, 
I could take on more challenging problems like implementing functions, conditional statements and loop. To make it accessible to everyone easily, I had to make sure that it could run in the browser. Because browser can be run on a simple smartphone and doesn't require you to install anything. Otherwise, a programming language usually requires a multiple installations of software on the computer. Besides this, I had to ensure that the engine of the language, that is interpreter, is not dependent on any external code like libraries. That meant, if I had to build something from scratch, I had to build it from scratch. More features always mean more bugs, but we have testing mechanism in place giving Kalam its stability. Kalam is mobile friendly. We don't have any sign up. You see what you came to see so that you can do what you came to do. It's been a year since the launch of Kalam and we have been overwhelmed by the positive feedback we have got from the community. There have been almost half a million hits on Kalam's LinkedIn post. So many users have submitted their code snippet written in Kalam to us and you can find those on kalam.io slash examples. Kalam went open source recently as version 1.1.0. This meant the code base had to be developer friendly so that people who want to engage can look at the code, understand how it works and start contributing to the project. So far, developers have been contributing to the project by building documentation, fixing bugs, making front-end changes and sharing suggestions for the future versions. Kalam also has a Discord server where such discussions takes place and it helps us to build a community around it. This community is still in its early stage. So far, we have 10 developers, mostly from India, working on the code base. We also have a dedicated efforts towards building documentation and managing the community. I hope Kalam can make coding accessible to almost everyone in India. It can bring awareness to young minds of the country about skill of the future and have a huge impact on our contributions towards 21st century. India is a multilingual country, that means Hindi isn't sufficient as well. Right now we have support for Hindi and Marathi, but we are planning to add support for other regional languages as well. This feature was priority for me, which is why while designing Kalam, I am moving towards a future where adding a new language would be as easy as clicking three buttons without destabilizing the code base. In the upcoming versions, we are planning to extend our support to Tamil and Telugu speakers which will be released by the end of July. As long as you are curious enough to explore programming, I think there shouldn't be any barriers. With Kalam, programming will become a multilingual experience. Kalam is already two versions ahead of its initial beta release with version 1.2.0. Since launch, we have had over 50,000 users and 71% of those accessing it via mobile. Eventually, we want to have a use case for Kalam, just like we have JavaScript for web development and Python for data science. Currently, it is best suited for learning and creating algorithms. We are looking for a use case that is India specific and not necessarily related to creating websites or apps. It could be tailored to creating utility code that you can embed anywhere or making it suitable for solving complex math equations. If you are a Vinith or know somebody like Vinith, this is where it all begins. You can visit Kalam and start coding with just one click. I think coding literacy will play a major role in where India will stand in next two or three decades. Technology is going to be the direct catalyst of our growth but as long as we are merely consumers of it, we won't bring any significant change. We need to position ourselves as the creators and I think Kalam can be one of the first steps towards that journey.